Hello, everybody. Thank you all for being here. This is this episode entitled "Fly by the Seat of Your Pants" at all po all times. Hey, Vita, what's going on? Whoop! Let's look into this mic. Maybe the cord is loose. I don't know. Every time I touch it, though, it's like. <laughs> now I wanted to get everybody warmed up. We um, is it? There's there's an elephant in the room here. Um. And the elephant in the room is Blackout Tuesday, and um, Mellow Mermaid felt very strongly that she did not want to participate in streaming today, um, and I love her and respect her for that. Um, and I'm going to give her a quick shout out, because um, she is um, just the sweetest. Um, I... It, if I was given a little more lead time, I... What, what did I do? Okay, Pashley, fingers, type, type. Thank you, Zick. Um, if I had had a little bit more lead time, I probably could have made a different arrangement. Um, but uh, as far as how I read the movement the, for the blackout movement, um, it's we're not gonna be performing, producing music, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I'm gonna stick with that, I'm gonna honor that. Um, and so we're not gonna do any singing today, but I did, uh, Gloop Dog was super generous of his time, and he um, is. We're gonna do a co stream. This is gonna be. I put three eyes. Yeah. Whoops. Let's do this. But I will say, um, I do not support the death of this innocent man and many innocent black lives. This shit has to fucking stop. Not because of the rioting and because of the unrest right now, but be because people count. People fucking count. And it's just basic human decency. You know, not everybody is given a fair shake in life. They're not. And now is the time to talk about it. Now is the time... I mean, it, it, you can't, I, Sup Daily put it perfectly. We're not going to end this by pointing at the smoke and saying, hey, look, you have to put out the fire. You're ready. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to send a DM to Gloop. Um, I have, I just call Gloop Dog. Before I call, call Gloop Dog, this is, I am putting this GoFundMe in for George Floyd into chat. If you guys are so inclined to, to, to help out his family, please, please, please consider donating. All right, so I have my list of questions here. I couldn't be fancy about this today. Hey, let's, let's send a DM, let's send a DM. I have it as a timer, Zick, so I just type in his chat. Can we also Samudi, so welcome guys. Everybody, thank you for being here. And I, I this was a pot. Here's the thing about content creation, and I, and I will give everybody this heads up. Um, it, is it is pertinent to always think five or six steps ahead in your content creation. And what I mean is, I was thinking of ideas for this podcast. Hey, Raroni, how's it going? Love you, sir. Um, how are you doing? Like, that's what it's about today, guys. Um, I don't want to gloss over and be silent because I'm uncomfortable and I don't know what to say. But I am. I am uncomfortable and I don't know what to say. And we should all be uncomfortable. But for, for, for me, when I go out and I get pulled over by the police, I'm not, I'm not like, fuck. I, I, I could be dead. What am I going to... Who's going to take care of my son? There and she is. Hey, we got him. Hey, girl. Hey, hey, dog. Hey. Thank you what? so much. <laughs> My pleasure. Your pleasure. 
I like that. I like that pronunciation. Did you use that and finish it? Learn that in uh, in doggy school. Yes, yeah, that's right. We learned uh, high, yeah, high English. High English. My plea is <laughs> High English, proper, proper English. You have to, you have to be able to get up on all fours though. You know, doing those plies. You know. So. Plie jour, yes. <laughs> Call me tiny. Thank you so Curly Doobie, Curly Doobie insists that we don't speak English, though. She ins insists that I speak American. She says it's not even the same thing. She says it's not the same thing. I would agree because they're that they, they it, over in the UK there is like different spellings and things like practice and 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 different usage, different pronunciations sometimes. Yeah. So it's it's it can be very different, and even within the United States, there's different dialects of English. You know. Yo, guaranteed. I go if I when I, I worked down in uh in Atlanta for six months and I went down oh, wow. there and you get you get to the point where you know the the accent's quite thick and right. you ask them to repeat themselves and they know why you're asking them to repeat themselves because they're chewing on their words and very southern drawl. It's almost right. Cajun to a variable degree. Absolutely. And then you're like they're like, don't, then they'll be like, don't even act like I have an accent because this is how God talks. All right. <laughs> so you're like, you're right. Okay, you're right. This, you obviously don't have an accent. This is how God talks. And, and that day you learned your lesson. You put your tail between your legs and you just, you just walked away. Yeah, we're there. We're there. We're there to do a job. It's okay. So, I, you know, speaking of doing a job, you have been in the movie industry for how long? Uh, so coming up on 13, I've been a union member for 13 years now, or 10 years, 10 years, 10 sorry, years. 10 years and in the business for 13. Okay. So what, what does it take for one to become a union member in, in your line of work? Cause you're a grip. Right? Uh, it's one of the, yeah, grip it's, and I think it's the same for most union, uh, work in sure. the film industry. It's, uh, it's the catch 22 of you have to have union work to get days sure. and then you have to be in the union to get union days. So either right. long story short, you have to have somebody who sticks their neck out for you and, sure. uh, and gets you in, or you have to be on a non-union show that gets converted to a union show uh yeah. in the middle of your production yeah so. i mean we have unions in in the opera world too and i i can't say i'm a union member because it wouldn't be worth it for me to join it i mean you could just join it and say hey what's up i'm pashley but um if I, i've been on the waiting list for washington national opera for about uh two years meaning if they lose a soprano well, I mean, not now, but if they lost this, <laughs> I would be called in to sing for production. But you automatically become a member of the union once you sing with with that group. So anyway, unions, but they're, they're there for protection. They're there for protection because, I mean, at least there's there's a ton of abuse in, in, in uh, the music industry. Yeah, uh, there are there just is within a union. Uh, yeah. I. I don't uh, I don't necessarily flock to the meetings every time we have sure. a meeting or whatever or read the bulletin that we get monthly from start to finish but I make sure that my all my accreditation is uh, current mm -hmm. and I make sure that my dues are paid ahead of time gotcha. so in that standing I feel like I'm a good union member you know maybe I'm not as active as I should be but that's why I pay my dues. So well, I have other people who can be active for me. <laughs> well, you're 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 busy, you know, supporting and loving on everybody in Twitch Sing. So we we all understand and forgive you for that. <laughs> At least for well, that's a whole different animal. That's a whole different animal. As I'm watching television shows becoming <laughs> automated and being done from home with, yeah. with you know, with cameras that I have for you know less than uh, you know for affordable cameras and. Uh, and mm -hmm. the lighting that you can get on Amazon, I'm watching it happen. I'm wondering how much grip work there's going to be when things get back to, uh, well, well, there's not never going to get back to normal, but when it gets back normal. to, well, when we just, just when we get back to production, because we're not back, to, Hollywood's not open yet. It's starting to reopen, but it's definitely not. Now, who's called back in Hollywood at this point? It's questionable. Uh, okay. They, they, it's they, it's so up in the air, and they're yeah. so they're leaving it to to the studios to determine how what productions they want to bring back and stuff like that and how sure. uh, 
intense they want to get and in the same aspect you know but they're also not giving the they're giving these uh these um uh like you know licenses to film and film uh permits and stuff like that and then turning around and uh and putting a 5 p.m curfew on everything so right. it's like it's, it's very tricky yeah especially now especially yeah. now especially right sure. now um so do you if you had a next step a next dream step in your in in your outside of twitch job i won't call it like your real job because i i know this is a real job as much as any um what what, what would you love to do uh i've reached a ceiling in my career okay uh yeah at 13 years there's really nothing else that i want to do uh it as far as film production there's i don't want to be a key grip i could become a key grip and buy a bunch of gear and then rent it out whenever i do movies and have to store it when i'm not in between films and all that kind of stuff but at 43 i just bought my first house so i don't see myself Mm -hmm. buying a rental plate you know a storage space and a bunch of gear i was always the guy who ran around saying stuff you own ends up owning you and i'm a firm <laughs> believer in that it's true uh so i uh yeah so yeah i don't see myself buying a bunch of gear so at sitting at the number two position mm -hmm. being a best boy you take care of other people's gear and you make sure that other people's gear is taken care of but you don't have the liability of it or have to worry about inventorying it and Fix, paying for fixing it and storing it and all that kind of stuff. You just make sure that when movies go on, that everything that goes in comes back and it's all in working order. And you basically just get to spend production companies' money and stuff like that. It's not a bad gig, to be honest with you. No, I, I think it's fantastic. And I think you've like seamlessly brought your experience in lighting and how things look to your stream. And you've inspired so much of us, so many of us to up our game with that i mean i just i think you, your personality is so important to this streaming thing you know but then the other piece of that is like what people are looking at and i and i get super hyped when i see that fog machine go off when i see those lasers when you stand in the middle of those <laughs> lasers and like that's your emote right is the <laughs> <laughs> there is one there's a couple of there are a couple of them that was yeah that was a happy accident that was an experiment that i did i did and, and you're right it did come from an experiment that we did in a movie we took we took we wanted the, this cool effect and we needed to do it quickly so we took something that because the, the lights that you're seeing make those lasers are not meant to do that oh really but no they're not at all they're meant to be hung above your head and cast designs like you like you have one you have one in your lighting that casts designs on the wall behind Correct. you that's purely what that's supposed to do right it's supposed to hang directly overhead and cast stuff on the floor like of a skating rink or at a dance party or something all designs and stuff on the floor well if you blast a fog machine through it you're gonna get a cool laser effect out of that so that's sure that's what i that's what i did i saw those and how that they how they were using them and i was like wonder what happened if we fogged that up but we did that we did that on a film we did that on an 80s film uh it was actually a, okay. a showtime show showtime show where we had something like that and well, they wanted it to look cooler and so some you know special effects comes in with their fog machines and they start wafting fog in and then it looked even cooler and then i was like oh maybe i could do that at some time down the road there, there it did. we did it yeah well, that's, that's these it's like a 25 dollar light that um it's not yeah. that expensive Comparatively speaking, it's not like, you know, oh my God, laser. You buy a laser light, you're going to spend oh. 70, 80 bucks on it. That's a $25 light that you just blow some fog in front of and it kind of has a cool effect. Well, especially given the format, the smaller format, you know what I mean? Like, um, like it's interesting, you know, when Liddy first came here, guy, like back in January, he's like, this room is really small. You know, we're not working with a huge amount of space and like the epicness of the, the, the set. You know what I mean? So you really don't need too much. Like my my light back here, that's supposed to go on the ceiling of a child's bedroom. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> and it was twenty five dollars. Exactly what again. it's supposed to do. To turn it on its side, and now you've got a cool, you know, mystical fairy tale princessy background flowing behind you. Yeah, and you could put moon and stars there and, and, and there you go. And then like, you know, I have these hobby lights. I'm gonna try to find a ring light because I, I just, I'm being persnickety about it. <laughs> ring lights are great. 
Ring lights are great. But yeah, the hobby lights, they were maybe 35 bucks a piece, but they're really cool. Like you can move them and you know, um, I think having like, and, and being able to identify the focus, the subject, you know, you were talking about that and like having the accent light in the background is, is, is a really good formula. Yeah, there's, uh, there's, you know, we're not trying to go for really a cinematic. There, you can get cin cinematic with your stylization, mm -hmm. but sure. Generally speaking, you want to be the subject, and you want to be the what we say in the industry. We say the hottest thing because we talk about color temperature, right, and exposure temperature and stuff like that. So the hottest thing is the brightest thing, but it's not so much sure. the brightest thing. I'm pointing on my screen right now. Okay. You don't necessarily have to be the brightest thing. I'm not the brightest thing in my frame. The brightest points of light are my candles, right? Sure. But they're so tiny and there's so few of them that me as the subject takes up more of the frame in, a, in an overall hotter look than okay. my candles do. Right. So you can have hot specks of light behind you or whatever. A street light, if you're doing cinematography, is going to be brighter than your thugs are. Right. But your sure. thugs are going to be warmed up in the foreground and take up more of the frame and just overall going to have a hotter overall color temperature than mm -hmm. these little specks of really bright light that you're using to for style. Gotcha. So that's but, kind of like that's one, and that's just one. I just one philosophy. One. That's the way I wanted to do it. That's the way I want to do it. You could take it, and if you want something a little more moody, you cut out a couple fill lights. Right. You cut out your you cut out your ring light. Now you're just bathed in like screen light, and then right. your accent lights and your back lights really pop, and you have this moodier kind of like uh, vampire, more vampire-y kind of look. You can you can play with lights all you want to, and with the, the affordability of lights these days, it's crazy what you can get. Yeah. For, for, and, and well, quite was, affordable exactly yeah. and and like you could you could rock a c922 or a c920 those logitech cams you don't really need i mean i know you've made the jump to dslr and, and many of the partner streamers do but if you're still like on, thinking on a budget because going to that dslr can be quite an investment but all you need to do is upgrade your lighting and you have a really cool look like i didn't know this about bat sam i thought she was on dslr but just her lights are incredible in her little living room there where she streams so <laughs> i was like those are c922s okay <laughs> okay it's true it's true <laughs> it's the more light you can put in different layers and the more you can play with the different intensities you can get a lot of work out of a lens Sure. I see, you know, I you, it, and you can get a lot of work out of a basic webcam. You know, mm -hmm. it's a matter of do you have this big, huge, toppy overhead light that's blowing out your screen and all right. this kind of stuff. Like a lot of people just don't think they just think turn on the lights in the room and you're all good. But and uh, why isn't my why doesn't my camera look very good? Well, it's 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 a whole there's a whole science to what the camera is receiving, what kind of light it's receiving, the quality of light it's receiving, how deep the light is, how far sure. away from it it is. Yeah, because it's all the science of you know. This is what cinematographers get paid huge amounts of money to know. You know how to play with every situation that they're brought up with and get and make their films look the exact same way with the same contiguous lighting style throughout the whole film and stuff like that. these Correct. are why these these cinematographers are paid these huge amounts of money is because they can do all that math and all that science and stuff in their head on the fly really fast and they have the experience to have, have done it over and over and over again so they know what lens to bring in mm -hmm. how how hot to make the screen how to bring down the background to make the foreground look great or how to bring up the bring up the whole thing to you know black out one window and then bring up the whole thing and now your inside looks like it's daytime or whatever you know right. they know all the tricks of the trades and stuff like that and that's why they get paid the big bucks and in fact these days in cinematography they're paying uh directors of photography or cinematographers more than they're paying the real director where you used to have all the money spent especially in marvel movies right you saw all the money used to be spent on all these big name directors gore verbinski you know in pirates of the caribbean and all this kind of right. stuff and the director would be super duper expensive now they don't give a shit about that anymore it's all about the look you know it's all about you have movies like mad max fury road which was not even there wasn't even a script you know, there wow. was not, it, it was, it was all about the look. It was all about the symbology of it. It was all done on storyboards. The whole thing, there was not even a script. Right. It was all done with storyboards. So you have what, in my opinion, one of the 
best cinematography, one of the best displays of cinematography and storytelling through a camera in probably the last 15 to 20 years in Mad Max Fury Road. Sure. It was phenomenally shot and the, the storytelling in that ro- in that movie with the camera and how the camera is used to tell that story just it's a it's a it's a master class on how to tell a story with a camera and uh, and so you know so you don't even need a script or a director you just need a look and you need the camera to tell the story for you so they're spending a lot more money on cinematographers these days than they are big name directors well what i would say in response to that is if you think about how people choose which movies to go see they're gonna go see those marvel movies they're gonna see these spectacles because yeah. because of the large format you know like uh something i can't think of any recent movies i'm um, off the top of my head but if it's kind of a more intimate crime thriller something you know that people are like well i can watch it at home you know but what what take what takes advantage of that large format? Something that is absolutely spectacular and beautiful, like an Avatar, or you know what I mean? Yes, and then even though you, it's, it's a prime example. Okay, you're talking about an Avatar, right? Now sure. you've got a director, you got one of the best in the business. Why is James Cameron one of the best in the business? Because he can walk through a movie set and he can point at every piece of gear. He's like uh, David Fincher. He can mm-hmm. point at every piece of gear from what the grips have in their shitty little carts to what the lighting guys are doing to what the standby fucking painter has in his cart. You know, he knows what every piece of grip gear on the set does. He knows what he needs, what he doesn't need. Mm -hmm. He's a, he's a ground break. He does groundbreaking things in cinematography. So you got, now you've got a director. The reason they spend reason James Cameron gets the full reins. The reason why David Fincher gets the full reins is because they think, like a cinematographer they're not some director out of directing school who did a few short films but never has held a camera for 17 hours and shot that shit out where their shoulder is absolutely burning on fire by the end of the day because they had to get whatever the hell they needed to get you know you got you got these directors who think like cinematographers and those are your bangers right those are the ones who give you the good shit because they're not only able to, they're able to make the actor or the actress walk through the camera space and deliver the the aspect. They're not thinking like an actor for the performance aspect. They're thinking, how's the camera going to suck this up? How is this shot going to make this convey this emotion better, you know, enhance what the actor or the actress is saying rather than just point it at the actor or the actress and let the actress or actor, let the actor work. These people are using the the camera as a paintbrush and sure. uh, and telling the story visually. So it's pretty bitch. And that's why we go to the movies. You know what I mean? We want to be taken away. I think like as well as you know, you're talking about this mathematical end of it and knowing the gear. There's also you need to be on both sides of your brain. You gotta have you gotta have an eye for the art too. You know, like in those Lord of the Rings movies and and Peter Jackson and I, I don't remember who did cinematography for that movie but it's just like you know the beacon scene in uh return of the king just right. absolutely stunning like i feel like you, you also need a, an eye for art in a way in this and this this imaging right or am i am i off base with that no and that's where the directors really come in thank you for that follow dory to uh dorito uh, jacko's got a jacko's got a question here sure Thank you for the bit. Thank you for those bits. Uh, the the uh, Jack has got a question here that's relevant to kind of what we're talking about. He says, Absolutely. Jack says, not all of my views are shared with others, but I don't feel captivated in this day and age to want to go out and see a mu- movie in the cinema. Sure. I think that's multiple fair. reasons, multiple reasons for that, Jacko. First of all, I think that we are, we, we, there's, there's too much. There's there's too little of what exactly what we're talking about. Uh, there's too little storytelling. So a lot of, these days, a lot of people will only go to, to the cinema to see a blockbuster. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I. Think... Sorry. Hold on a second. No, you got it. Uh, so they'll only go to the cinema to thank you, Ken. Thank you, Kenny's music show. They'll only go to the movies to see a blockbuster, right? And so. These people like J.J. Abrams and Michael Bay don't know how to tell stories with the camera. Nope. They know how to get good performances out of actors. They know how to make cameras move around real fast and to dazzle you with with bullshit. 
but they don't they they baffle you with bullshit rather than dazzling you with brilliance they do use old tired tropes and tired camera movements yeah that we're all sick of seeing right we're all tired of seeing it we've seen it a million times now and now now instead of uh instead of star wars the next generation having you know really strong writing and really strong scripts and really strong science fiction but now you watch picard this new you know jj yeah, see- abrams and kurtzman and those assholes who really just know how to make make people turn off turn off their brains for a little bit you know which people right. don't want to go to the movies to just turn off their brains you do occasionally but not every fucking time anymore you know now and so especially because now we have 4k tvs for a grand or less in right. our living rooms uh with stereo surround sound that is comparable to the to the theater and the theaters are astronomically out of control now because uh producers are over budget everything's over budgeted everything everybody's got the piece by so the biggest thing i'm concerned about people know now they can entertain themselves for an ass ton cheaper at home watching movies just like jacko is saying watching themselves at home they don't want to spend a whole bunch of movies the experience they're going to get at the theater by picking one movie having one movie at their disposal going all in for a hundred bucks by the time you take a family of four with popcorn and everything spending a hundred bucks to go to the cinema we realize now that we're quarantined we don't have to do that anymore right the, what the, we don't have to spend that level of money to have a good level of entertainment. So we got a bitchin' TV at home with bitchin' stereo system. And if we don't like a movie because it's fucking garbage, because it's Star Trek Picard, or because mm-hmm. it's the ninth iteration of of Star Trek, which was absolute garbage, yeah, we can turn it right the fuck off and switch right over to something else without having to go all in on a hundred bucks. Absolutely. You know? Is there a movie that you've ever walked out of? Speaking of that, there's yeah. a movie that uh, I've fallen asleep in. I've never walked out on it because I feel okay. like okay, I'm dark and cozy and I'm full of popcorn now. So I'm <laughs> and I'm usually a slurpy. Uh, so it's like I'm just gonna go ahead and sit here. But Weasel and I, can't, well, I, I'll be dead bluntly honest with you. The last movie I saw in the theater was the bla- bullshit Brad Pitt space movie, Ad Astra, when Weasel was here. Wow, that's that's what nine no, months. No, no, wait, no, 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 wait, no, wait. That's well, not necessarily true. Oh. But, but let me just put it this way: my movie-going experiences were so, I were so bad that that's the last one that I remember because it was exponentially bad, and I've made fun of it, fun of it up to this point. I may have gone to a movie after that, but yeah. it was not. It was so disparaging that i don't remember it let me just put it that way <laughs> it was it wasn't memory. it wasn't an experience that i remember like oh man i'm so glad i went to this movie and saw it at this point you know right. uh it wasn't you know so the movie going experience wasn't anything if anything if i did go to a movie with anybody after weasel and i went to see ad astra it was just because i enjoyed the experience with that person and i probably remember what we talked about more than the movie so if they said hey remember the movie we saw i'd be like did we but if they said hey remember that conversation we have i'd be like oh yeah i remember that and that's what movie going experiences have become they haven't become this event that you look forward to so much that you got to go and get it and you got to get that movie going experience they've now become a gamble and yeah. people are not willing to gamble it anymore i will say as far as movies that made me think like you're talking about I, knives out which Liddy and i saw it was about around the time that the new star wars movie came out speaking of which bleh. knives out was fantastic knives out was good as far as like you know the plot twist the 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 the, uh, the person you didn't think or did think you know they, they're, they're taking your brain all over the place so just a reminder yeah. to my chat too, if you want to ask Loopy a question, um, just go ahead and put that in, in chat or into the channel points. You guys are more than welcome. So But is that something that is that something that you uh is that something that you have to do? I mean, do you have to go to the to the cinema to have this experience? So absolutely like, not. That's that's I'm, the point. That's I'm seeing the point. cinemas I'm seeing cinemas 
closing down, like shutting down after all of this. They're not going to be able to stay open. And if cinema shut down, then movie productions diminish. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if movie productions diminish, where does my career then lie? Is the question that I'm going to be start asking myself, especially as sure. more as as my career is forayed more and more, uh, and there's no sign of it coming back anytime soon. Well, I, I I think it's safe to say I have unpaused redemptions. By the way, I apologize for that. It was a little bit chaotic before. Okay, right, Jacko's here. saying here in chat. Okay, Curly Doobie and I. When Curly Doobie and I came to visit, we went to a movie. Could oh, I I do remember okay. going to I do remember going to a Curly Do movie with Curly Doobie now. I do remember that. Do I remember what movie we, if we did? I don't remember what movie we saw. I don't, I, you know, I don't remember what movie we saw if we did. And that's the strange part about it is movie experiences are becoming. See, we didn't. We okay. Jack was saying we went. <laughs> Jack was saying we. I was like, okay, I don't know. Wait, if we did what? go to, if we did go to a movie. I went with Weasel. I know I went with Weasel, but it's like if I went with Curly Doobie, I don't remember if we, what we saw. You know, that's and that's where movie, the laughing. only reason I remember Ad Astra <laughs> is because Weasel and I have made fun of it for the last year. <laughs> you know I, what I'm saying? Because yeah, I mean, that is a passion of Weasel's as well. And you guys are like thick as thieves, like the, the brother is born and separated at birth, you know, <laughs> and it was so much fun like, watching you guys and that, and that visit. We thought a meteor would hit the earth of just yeah. the, the awesomeness that was you too, you know? <laughs> So. Yeah, this uh, that was. I mean, I, that's it's just case in point. Case in point <laughs> is like where film has gone to this day. Like we went, the, Ad Astra was a garbage movie. If anybody sure. liked it, if anybody saw it and liked it, more power to you. But like we <laughs> we went there thinking we saw the trailer. The trailer was awesome. The write ups, the reviews were awesome. But no, but we went there thinking it was going to be a kick-ass movie, and it was absolutely garbage. And we fell asleep three or four times. Both of us did, and we came out of it going, "What the hell? That movie was so bad." And what? Right. And then you go back. Then you go back and you read the reviews again, and you cycle through all the people that you know were paid to say this or to say that or to say that. Absolutely. Look at the <laughs> and last then you Jedi. Finally get... The last Jedi, I think, fell victim to that. And there was never more a disparaging, like a, just a difference between audience review and critical review for that movie. I was so excited for it. And then like, that was a movie I wanted to walk out of. I was like, I, I can't. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Sorry to people who like that movie, but I, I absolutely hated it. Thank you for that eight month stare drinker. Thank you, buddy. Yay. Yeah, if somebody says, so yeah, we go back and we read the reviews after we get back from Ad Astra. And then if we scroll down to the first negative review we find and the guy's like, did any of these guys above me who reviewed this actually go see the movie or did they just <laughs> review the trailer? Because none of these things that they're saying is anything that I saw in the movie that I watched. And we're sitting there, Weasel and I are sitting there reading that guy's review. We're like, follow this guy. This guy actually saw the movie and is actually giving an honest review. But it's like, uh, then, no, this is a great segue. I don't, know if, if, I don't know if it's a segue, but then it's it's also into the whole thing of, you know, um, we we get exposed to so much shit, and people want to put. I'm not even gonna say fake news or anything like that, but people want to put shit out all the time, and we got to figure out. It's so it's so hard. We want to be consumers so fast, but it's so difficult to sift through what's legit and what's not. Correct. And we want to be so reactionary. I had somebody come into my channel on Sunday in the middle of the game show yeah. and tell me that a person in the community had died. I remember that. And I remember being like, oh, my God. And, you know, we took a second. We embraced it. Yep. Six hours later, they come back in the channel and tell me it was all a hoax. Wow. Perfect example. Holy shit. That's terrible. Yeah. Somebody was fucking with her. Oh. She's bawling. On a stream, singing with this person, thinking that they're dead. Oh my god! And six hours later, she comes back into the stream and apologizes because whoever told her that was lying to her and fucking with her. And oh my god, that and, is fucking uh, horrendous. Bing, bang, boom. Yeah. Your Liddy's like, are you fucking kidding me? Fucking in yeah. all caps, like. Clickbait news, Miss Jilly's calling it. You know. Absolutely. And this happened just in my stream yesterday. It's 
it's the information superhighway, you know, like that's a buzzword and a half, but it really is. Like we get the information so quickly, you know, especially like coronavirus, what's going on with the rioting and everything. We're getting it so quickly and it's hard to sift through and like, what does this actually mean right now? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, who does that shit? Someone who takes pleasure in that stuff. I, I have no other opinion Sick to fucks. offer. Sick fucks, yeah. Bored <laughs> people. Bored <laughs> fucks. I, oh, God. I was going to ask you a question. I know everybody asks, like, the usual bread and butter, you know, like, oh, when did you start streaming and blah, blah, blah. But I wanted to ask you why you started streaming. Because we know you've been on here for about a year, correct? A little over a year, yeah. A little yeah. over a year. It was all just, it was, uh, I was going to, we were going to, uh, Dr. Disrespect was, we were like, oh man, this, we could come up with a little, it was, mo- it was going to be a reason for me and my buddy, Triple X, Fink Triple X, who jumps into the chat occasionally. He's my boss. He's one of my grips, my key grips that I work for. Okay. Been my friend for 10 years before I worked for him and all that kind of stuff. Got me in the business. Long story short, he was going to, he's really great at shooters, but oh, he's okay. super introverted, super introverted. So. I was going to produce a show for him. He was going to be the talent and I was going to be kind of the show. And we were going to, I was just going to be, we were going to have this spike, the bulldog, yippee, chihuahua, yeah, boss, yeah, boss thing going on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then, so I was like, well, if I'm going to produce the show for you, I need to figure out how, how the, the mechanics of it, <laughs> the mechanics of it all works. So like, how do I actually stream and all that kind of stuff? Right. It's, it's, it's complicated. You know, you're finding your own style as a streamer. You're finding, you know, what looks good, what personality works for you. I mean, obviously your own personality works. Do you, do you, like, we, we had a little heart to heart about this about a month ago. Like, so you, you will never, ever go live if you are not right in the head and you are not feeling like you're a feeder. That's what I'm going to call it. Like a feeder. I would say probably your goal as a streamer is to bring happiness and joy to the people who are watching you you are not one of these people who is like toxic you know what i mean because that that's that's the approach some people take they just want to be you know they want to shit on each other and and the world around them well yeah there's that that's one end of the spectrum yeah, uh i mean this i mean we're talking about extremes sure sure uh i will definitely if i'm not feeling like streaming i will postpone it for a couple hours and it's not feeling like streaming but it's not it's not even not it's not even feeling like not streaming right it's just like i'm not i'm not quite there yet i'd rather right. push it a couple hours and get there uh sure. then turn it on forcibly turn it on at 10 o'clock or whatever sure. and i think a lot of streamers put pressure on themselves to be active at 10 o'clock but also i think you know once you become a regular streamer then part of your regimen becomes starting a couple hours earlier and making sure you're in the headspace every day at eight o'clock if that's where you want to go and be a regular streamer but i don't think that's a requirement there my our community is not asking for that out of us or right. or you know nobody's saying hey gloop why aren't you streaming all the time or why don't you have a schedule people no no one's ever asked me gloop why don't you have a schedule you know true i'll post one i, I just started posting one in my panels now just to kind of let people know generally when i'm speaking when i'm going to be on but i'll go in an hour ahead of time and bump that start time for sure if i'm gonna if i'm not ready yet or I haven't quite had my breakfast or, you know, things cleared things out of the way where my focus can totally be on the stream. Absolutely. And I also am lucky. I don't have the distractions that a lot of people have. I don't have a uh, children relying on me. I don't have a significant other who wants my attention. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm sitting here with can be completely selfish and can take the liberties to do that. Or some people have small windows of opportunity where they can stream where that that luxury isn't quite, isn't something that they have. But I don't think you so going into the attitude of streaming I do believe a lot of people watch streamers in order to escape right it's the same reason we watch television the same reason we play games ourselves so there are some streamers who put who want to but then there are also some streamers who want their streams just to be a video blog of their lives there's nothing wrong with that either absolutely I mine's not going to be like that mine's not it will I will be transparent in how I want to, in things that I'm feeling, in ways that I'm feeling, things that I'm saying, uh, emotions Mm -hmm. that I have about world things or stream things or interpersonal things for sure. But I don't want my stream to be 
a couch, a, a psychiatrist couch where I'm going to sit and talk about my problems as if my problems aren't, are the only problems in the world. Sure. You know, I'm all, I'm trying to constantly think about other people's issues as well. And that consistently puts my issues in check, or at least it gives them perspective. I'm not going to say that they're not valid or whatever, but it just sure. gives them different perspectives. So I, anybody can come on and say, oh, I'm having a bad day. I'm stressed out about the riots. I'm stressed out about Absolutely. this and it sucks. And I'm, I don't have a job right now. I'm unemployed. I'm worried about where I'm going to, how I'm going to fly home for Christmas. Things like they're going through everybody's heads. You know, I'm worried about what I'm going to do, how I'm going to make ends meet, how I'm going to make the mortgage, things like that. Absolutely. Yes, we can sit here and we can talk about that stuff, but everybody's feeling that pain right now. Yeah. I want to, I want to focus on the good stuff for right now. Sure. So that that's will, where that I'm will at encourage with. people like, you know, like there was, it was, it must have been yesterday, two days ago where I was just like kind of not emotionally low, but like kind of drained and not because I had done anything bad. It was just, it was a long day and it was just like, I, I know that like I, 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 I rely upon, you know, streams like yours, weasels, where you guys are just pouring out you know, love and positivity and energy. And, and it helps me get through my day, you know, or, or my night as the case may be. Um, I would love to back it up to this is Zika. <laughs> That's a very interesting question. He said, would, would you make your own short movie in the future with all this knowledge that you have? Do you think you would be able to do that and maybe do a broadcast on Twitch? Uh, to make a short film, I... I'm not much of a writer and that's my problem with that. So, uh, I'm not much of a writer. I think it's cool. I think it'd be, it's, a. I, I, I suck at writing because by the time I write it, I'm already bored of it. And so I change it too much. I can't leave well enough alone mm -hmm. or I can't identify when something's good enough or well enough. So I'm a lot more better, a better writer at short bursts, like sketches or one song or right. whatever like that where it's short bursts and self-contained i i think that a long form movie or a long form play goes all over the place because i'm way too stream conscious so if i had a good writer that i could work with then hell yeah i mm -hmm. think for sure i would love you know so that's what we that's why weasel and i work so well off of each other we keep each other grounded he's very he's he's got we have we we fill each other's gaps. Hey, <laughs> wink, 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 nudge, nudge, giggity, nudge. Giggity, giggity, giggity. <laughs> uh, quite, quite good. But he'll say things. I'll say he'll say something, and I'll be like, "What about this?" And then he'll tennis it right back to me, and then I'll tennis it right back to him, mm -hmm. and we fill in the. That's why I love working with him so much because it's just so much, uh, where we fill where and we're not ashamed to tell the other person this doesn't work for that reason. Which is a lot of uh, people want to handle kid gloves uh, when we're talking about our streams yeah. and stuff like that. And I think it's important to be like, "Hey, have you tried this? This didn't work for me for that reason. It may not. It may work for you or whatever. But everybody's very protective of their streams because sure. it's a because it's a, a a prism of themselves or whatever. But I think it's important to to if you ask somebody. Hey, what do you think of my stream or what do you think of my content? And they give you constructive feedback. You can't get butt hurt about it. You have to take it. You don't have to implement it, but you have to, you just listen to it because you asked for it. Sure. Uh, and then, uh, and if somebody gives you, which I got some blunt criticism on my streams throughout the course of the last year, but I love that shit. I feed off of it. I don't get butt hurt. I'm willing to take the risk. I'm willing to say when Weasel, Timberlake's me. I know it's for a good reason <laughs> that I've done something that deserves it. And so I would rather him Timberlake me. That's the sign of a good friend than to tell me you're doing great. You're amazing. Your duets are so awesome when you've yeah. fallen short a little bit, when you're not giving your all or whatever the case may be, when you've forgotten parts of yourself or whatever the case may be. I'd much rather have somebody be like, Hey, what the fuck's wrong with you? You used to do this and I loved it and you don't do this anymore. Whatever. Then then it'd be like, everything is going great. That's not what, what we want to hear. How do we get better when people tell us you're doing amazing all the time? Which is the problem you see in Hollywood. When you see these yeah. actors and actresses 
going off the deep end. When you see Fergie do the national anthem oh, at Lord. the All-Star game, and oh. it's an absolute train wreck. And when the press goes, Fergie, what's up with that train wreck? And she goes, oh, you guys just don't get my expression. She, they, it's because Fergie is surrounded by people 247 that tell her she's fucking amazing and she's nothing she does is wrong. And pretty soon she starts to believe it. And I see it all the time in the business line of work that I am in. Pretty soon these people start to believe that their shit doesn't stink and that they can put on their pants two legs at a time and things like that. And then yeah. you see their fall from grace and everybody goes, What happened? You had it made. Well, of course, everybody around you is telling you you have it. You're the best thing in the fucking world. And then the minute the money dries up or the minute you lose a step or the minute you go off the deep edge, the roaches scatter and these celebrities look around. Nobody's left and they wonder what the fuck happened. Well, yeah, that's what happens. If people sat around all day long and told me I was amazing 247, I would be in the vast minority to question it, you know? You have the people who have, haven't have lost their way. You have your Tom Hankses or whatever. You're the people that when you have an interview with them, you're like, this person is grounded. This person hasn't lost their way. They haven't forgot where they come from. You have those people. But then you have the people who are just absolutely off the deep end. And you yeah. see why they're off the deep end. Well, I think I think there's also another piece of this. There's the like there there's you know Gloop Dog came alongside me a month ago and said, "Yo, what's up? What's going on with you?" And I'm like, "Well, okay." But there's also the the impetus for you to self evaluate. And I love the Twitch Things community as much as you know this this community has saved my life. But there there is the over encouragement. I would say like, "Oh, that was amazing," and you're and I'm guilty of this too. Like, "Oh, that was so good," and it was. But they're all, you have to kind of listen back and watch your own streams and you say, well, you know what? This didn't look so good because the camera was off. Like, I I, I, tr I try to watch at least like a half an hour and, and like in particular look at the stats. Like, oh, this is where it dropped. What happened? You know, that's it's invaluable to watch your own streams and not only to watch your own streams, but to you have to quickly get over the fact of, oh, look at me. I'm on a TV screen. Absolutely. Right. And I think I think those of us who play I, i'm not this is not anybody in the twitch sings community but i see it in other communities where the streamer is just tickled pink that there's a camera pointed at them oh we see ourselves so regularly doing duets and stuff we watch ourselves so regularly mm -hmm. i think it's a little a lot less common in the twitch sings community because sure. we're staring at ourselves and we're critiquing at ourselves so regularly whereas a gaming streamer unless they watch their stream back they're not seeing it at all right you know what Absolutely. i'm saying so we see it a little lot more and we, we can we improve ourselves a lot more which is why you see streamers improving their streams a lot more in the quality of their streams because not only are you watching yourselves but you're watching yourselves right next to somebody else too and right. you're like wait a second so there's a total like visual compare and contrast right there immediately Absolutely. so uh gi jane 420 thank you for that follow so we have um i have another question from daddy reynolds there's a, there's a little bit of, of encouragement and being positive no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> i'll read it for you uh we are one of the biggest things i love about gloop and pash in in parentheses no, <laughs> is the fact that you come across as genuinely good people even though you're putting on a show it doesn't feel like you're putting on a show uh, and he asks, I, am I alone that this needs to be the number one quality of the streamer I watch? Is this something you even think about when putting on a show? Like how mm. much of you comes through? You know, you're, you're, obvi you're obviously a caricature of yourself. You're, 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 sure. You have the adrenaline going through and you're, especially in what we're doing, like we're singing and you're performing. So there's that, there's that amplification right there yeah. in your energy. Yeah. You hype uh, up automatically. Yeah, but like I, you know, stepping into video games and doing something like this, it, it's it's an it's a different kind of energy, you know. Because in video gaming, I can't be screaming all the time, or I don't scream, but you know what I mean. You can't. It, there's no singing there, you know. So it is all about your personality. Maybe, can be. Can uh, be. Yeah, yeah. It'd be you get annoying if I sat there and sang through slay through the slay the spire all morning this morning. Yeah, it'd get annoying. <laughs> but. 
But also, I know for a fact that streamers like Madam Gandalf and stuff would sing and scoot. Mr. Scoot, before Twitch sings, yeah. would Scooty would hip hop his chat. Oh, you know, gosh, what do you say, that, yeah. Pablo Dicasso? How you doing? Scooty would Scooty would hip hop his chat. How you doing? How you doing, Kaicho? <laughs> And I was doing a bit of that too before, and it was why like the March, the the, the my people were banging down my door like twitching, switching, switching. So I was doing that on my stream already. Yeah, Madam Gandalf would sing, would put on karaoke versions from YouTube and just oh. karaoke jams and stuff like that while she was playing Sims and stuff. This is all before Twitch Sings was around, but now they have Twitch Sings and it just makes it that much easier. It's all just kind of self-contained, mm -hmm. but. But yeah, so a lot of people were doing that ahead of time. And I was also doing that. I noticed I was doing that when I first started streaming uh, World of Warcraft. Or not World of Warcraft, but uh, Dota. Uh, it was Dota. I noticed that I was miserable while I was streaming Dota. I had this bitch, I had resting bitch face. I looked angry the whole time. So I thought right. if I start streaming, if I start just pumping classic rock while I'm playing Dota, my energy will go up. And I'll be having more fun. It did. I was having a monumentally more fun. I'm singing along while the queue's waiting. I'm pulling out my guitar and making improv songs about waiting in the queue, making my <laughs> making my stoner Dota buddies just crack up. And I'm like, okay, this is a lot more fun. This is a lot more fun than just playing Dota. You fucking That's genius. when I started looking around at what else which is in Twitch. What else was in Twitch? What's up? What's what else going on Twitch? Found the music and performing arts category and shortly thereafter that found Twitch thing. Yeah. I was like, music and performing arts, this is something Frank and I could do. I could have Frankie over here and we could just do the Frank and Todd show. And you, you've had Rather than over. going at a bar and setting up our equipment and playing for pennies and then giving half of it to the bar because we had a bar tab and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> now we can just sit in the comfort of our own homes and just jam out and have some fun doing it and not have to worry about all that kind of stuff. So it was, it's advantageous all around. Do you think, because like... I think a really good example of like two different energies, I'll call it like Freddie Mercury is probably hands down one of the best performers we've ever seen in our in, in our generation. Right. But he was also immensely private once he stepped off the stage. And I kind of wonder, is that like kind of a recovery period? Like, what do you do when you step off a stream and you, you know, you got to replenish your energy? Like, are you what are your hobbies? Getting into other people's streams and saying <laughs> hi. I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, I, this this is, I mean, being this involved in Twitch has changed my life and it's vacuumed out of. I mean, my hobbies used to be going to karaoke bars twice a week. Uh, or they used to be doing, doing cover gigs, you know, were my hobbies and playing board games with my friends. I would have board game nights on Saturday nights with Frank and his wife and our, our friend Brett. So like those, those were my hobbies. And then when I'd come home, I would play video games, you know, I'd play right. Dota or I would play RimWorld or I would play Jackbox games with people, with friends of mine from Kansas city or whatever. So all the things that I did as hobbies, I are the things that you see me doing in my stream. <laughs> now I'm just turning a camera on while I'm doing it. But Fetch also... chasing the mailman, licking my balls. Go yes. Or the, where, or the <laughs> scar where my balls used to be. That's right, B. Liddy. That's right. Hey, there are no Liddy. other hobbies, Marvel <laughs> Maven. There is only Twitch. There is only the Twitch. There is That's only right. Twitch. <laughs> astronomy. Yes, I do. I, I used to be, I did, I did amateur astronomy as well. I still like to talk about it, but I don't, I don't go out and visit uh, people's telescopes anymore. But you're a very good cook is what I hear. Or at least when no. I hear you talk about it. Or at least when I heard Weasel talk about it, Weasel's like, he just made this this like potato skin like creation for me, and it was incredible. You know, <laughs> I I do like the cooking. I do. I'm a big fan of the cooking. Uh, I've gotten more and more into it as I uh, as I as time has gone on. Uh, it's I attribute it all to recipe delivery services. Uh, oh really? Are, yeah, I subscribe to a recipe delivery service, and they give you the ingredients that you need you have the basics salt pepper you know eggs flour all that kind of stuff and then you just make what they tell you to make and then you can make a whole bunch of different stuff from chinese food to you know to italian food to 
Gee, for, I have a Dutch oven now. I have things that I never thought I would ever own in yeah. my life. I have a, yeah. I, I and never a skillet, owned one. A cast I, iron skillet. I, so yeah, what? The cast iron skillet, like that's a particular cleaning process because you can't really use scope or well, hi hi soap. You cannot use soap with a cast iron skillet, right? Yeah, well, I'm, yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't really want to. You just want to use water and kind of scrub it out. Yeah. yeah. You don't really want it to. And then you want to reseason it and stuff like that. It's a whole process. But you, you can't, until you, yeah, until you cook something in a cast iron skillet that's nice and seasoned, it's the jam. There's, you can't You can't beat it. Yeah, so you can cook. Uh, yeah, I'm making pizzas and stuff like that. So it's really yeah. cool. But then you got to have somebody to cook for. So like Tony will eat the other half. Like all these play, all these uh, this recipe delivery service. Usually Tony, I just let Tony grab the other half of it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, Tony, I made, made, I'm making the burgers tonight. I'm making the tortellinis or whatever. And he's like, oh hell yeah, let's bug bug. Oh, let's get you're... It <laughs> all right then. Um... All right then. <laughs> so what was I gonna? I, now I've completely forgot what I was gonna ask you. Um. Cooking, oh, cooking stream. I've been, I was looking around the, you're probably alluding to a cooking stream. I was looking around the kitchen as far as how I could you gotta, make it. You gotta like rig that up. Like, I don't know how Madam, Madam Gandalf does that. They, they, I mean, she's got the webcams, you know. Above. I think I could get it done. I think I, I could get it done. I think the entire community thinks you can get it done and wants you to get it done. So Here's the thing though, is me cooking and pause. The pause are gonna be an issue. You've seen, you saw, like, I, there are burn marks on my paws just from smoking cigarettes when I used to wear <laughs> this thing. When I used to have my fur on and I was a cigarette smoker, I have burn marks in my paws. Ch oh, you no. chat can see it now. But, so I'm worried about how much, how you know, how, <laughs> how much olive oil is this left paw going to be able to soak up <laughs> before, <laughs> before... <laughs> How much marinara sauce am I going to get all over my eighth nipple is the real question. That's what it, <laughs> oh, am I, am I, am I really just setting a camera up so you can watch? So, so Twitch can watch me set myself on fire is really the question that I'm going for here. So, but, <laughs> but <laughs> Chris, the crafty kiddo says, put on a hat and leave it at that. <laughs> uh, I, yes. Yes. Well, I mean, <laughs> Uh, that, remember when Weasel did that a little while ago? He had Piora on there helping him out, and he was like doing the disasters in the kitchen. Like I feel yeah, like yeah, that yeah. could be good content. <laughs> Disaster Kitchen was there. Disaster Kitchen was there. Um, <laughs> hey Gippo, what's going on? Oh my goodness! Hat. So little off topic. Let's see. Well, this will be a fun question. Mm -hmm. Red Bearded Joe asks, what to do about this issue? It is hard to sleep in a dark room. So I stay up the whole time so I can get so I to the point where I'm sleep deprived. What what are your sleeping habits, Gloopy? Do you, are you a light lights block light blocking curtains guy? Do you like the sun waking you up in the morning? My dad, when he built a house in Maine, all the windows faced the rising sun and there was not a single curtain or blind to be found in that house because he wanted the sun waking him up. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he had this uh, kind of job. He had like probably the same job, 35 years, Monday through Friday, eight to five, guaranteed you're going to go in and get off at a certain time kind of stuff. Maybe yep. some overtime once in a while, but pretty predictable schedule, all things being said. Yeah, right? my dad was a ch the chief financial officer for a couple of companies. Um, Foot Locker was probably the biggest company he ever worked for, but he also worked for Filene's, Cushman and Wakefield, Yankee Candle. Um, so yeah. I, he was living that New York life for a while. He's now a, a published Christian author, and he has more followers than me on Twitter. Yeah. Which is <laughs> he has more followers than me and you put together on Twitter. Correct. I, 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 fo I follow your dad. You follow, I follow your dad. dad. <laughs> One of these days, I'll follow you, Pashley. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. But you know I follow you. you anyway, uh, no, uh, that's great for people who have that kind of job. If I had that kind of career, I would absolutely do that too. It'd be, you know, same time every day because the human body does well with ritual and with having a, a circadian rhythm and stuff like that. It really sure. responds well to that. I do not have that luxury though, but because I, uh, I could start work at six o'clock on a Monday morning. Right. And we're starting work at 5 p.m. on Friday. And then we have to wrench our schedule back to six o'clock the following Monday. 
So with that being said, yeah. there's a lot of times where we're on night shoots or whatever. I have to sleep during the day. So no, Absolutely. my entire room is a morgue when it's night. When So if I don't look at the clock, I have no idea what time of day it is in my room. And also, I don't turn on the television in my room. I don't mm -hmm. uh, or anything like that. I have one, but it's not connected to cable or or anything i have okay. to hook up a computer or something to it in order to watch it on that screen i have a little 36 inch screen in there but it's not a, hooked up to anything uh but it's for just in case i guess um sure but it, it's uh i play switch on it occasionally sometimes um gotcha but uh it's i uh, so yeah with that being said my studio i fall asleep on this on my little two-seater couch all the time watching youtube videos and then i'll wake up in the middle of the night and go to my bedroom my bedroom is it's quiet it's dark it's the place to sleep and that's all it is i don't do anything else in there there's no computer in there mm -hmm. there's, it's it's for bedroom stuff only and that's it there's Giggity. no entertainment yeah <laughs> no entertainment or distractions in there i was yeah. gonna say like uh liddy you know liddy's been here for like two and a half months now you know it was not the designer plan of either of us to be like 24 7 around one another but it was funny we both fall asleep to tv so we watched like i don't ask me why this is how i fall asleep but i fucking knew i'm, I'm just a fucked up individual but i love law and order svu and mm -hmm. that's like i like he'll just hold the ipad and i will like we'll start watching it and within like 10 minutes i will be out <laughs> yeah and when i was here and when i you know whenever i'd go visit in new jersey like he would have to have a tv show on too you know it was just it was a lucky a lucky coincidence that both of us need something on in order to fall asleep because imagine well like... i mean <laughs> then you know well we got that taken care of we know we, we know we're both have the same sleeping falling asleep habits i mean it's just like i agree i mean it's important it's important and until until i moved to the house and had two rooms to separate the two yeah. i would fall asleep with tv going on all the time i had i had a uh, I would do that. I would fall asleep with television. But now that I have two rooms, I have a bedroom. And then the studio, my studio is the third bedroom of my house. Tony sleeps in one. I sleep in the Got second you. one. The studio is the third bedroom, right? So that, yeah. And that third bedroom is tiled, right? It is tiled. Every, the whole, the whole, uh, every room in the house is tiled. So All when like, are. when assholes like me play that screen command or, you know, and, and you shit on the floor, it's an easy cleanup. Correct. Easy cleanup. That's right. And I... <laughs> When I first got the house and it was tile and I was like, ooh, this is rough. That's the best thing that could have happened to me. I know why they put tile in here who had it before me. And it's like, it's I, it's it's great. I dig it. I dig I, it. I've put heard, socks on. I've heard of people buying houses, like in particular, like animal lovers, because for that, for just, it's easier to clean up, like in particular, like breeders, <laughs> you know, like you, you remember this and you were a little pup. <laughs> <laughs> my, hey y'all, my tiger got bit by a soup bat and now Netflix wants to make a seven part documentary on me. What am I gonna do? It's <laughs> a good question. I say go for it. Sign that contract. Have him point all the cameras at you. Do it. <laughs> so Milton Nasty Mento has asked, I am new to Twitch. Welcome. Welcome, Milton. Milton I sings with me all the time. Milton, we were calling your name. He, Milton was supposed to be in the Church of Snacks Convention Booth Challenge. We were calling Milton's oh, no. name, but he wasn't there yesterday. I guess he had a bail. Oh no. Okay. We we're trying to get it get in the confession booth so we could get we could get some sins out of Milton. You, you get, that is a good place to meet some people and have some fun. By the way, guys, is Church of Snacks. Um, I want to ask you about that, but first I want to ask uh, ask his question. One thing I noticed is that there seems to be no formula for the big time success. There are people who have all elements I would think would lead to popularity. Great singing, stream multiple times a week, visual gimmick, super positive personality, but they can't get the popularity others get. Is there a formula seeing that I, that I as a noob don't see yet? And I think you as the, the only homegrown partnered uh, Twitch sing streamer, you would have a lot of advice about that. No, the answer is no. There uh, is none. This is a weird. This is such a weird uh, platform. It's the platform's fault. Right. Uh, it's not. There are so many other platforms where the cream can rise to the top quickly and easily. And I'm sure. not just saying online streaming platforms. I'm talking about in the world. You know. Sure. Uh, 
if you're going to be an actor in major motion pictures, you are got to do two things. You got to know your lines and hit your marks. And actors sure. who come in and don't know how to do those two things, which you do see them, don't last. You see them wash out quickly because there's $150,000 a day running on this minimum, you know, and we can't afford to have people be goofing off of about, uh, uh, because <laughs> this guy this is hilarious troll the one who came this troll hilarious troll just came in and goofed on me with that tiger bit by a soup bat thing just said all right well then i gotta go teach this guy how to kiss in the men's room at walmart stall two if you're interested <laughs> bye y'all i love this cat i love whoever this cat is i'm gonna go follow this person that improv. <laughs> but anyway so uh um so <laughs> anyway i was what i was saying uh is there for me? No, the cream does not rise to the top in this platform. I have done some zero view searching and I have found some absolute liquid gold where people are putting out some insane good shit to nobody. Right. Nobody would. And, and then you've got somebody streaming for 7,000 viewers who's not even engaging with their chat and playing a game shittily at that. Yep. And so. I don't know. I don't know. There, yeah, like Marvel Maven saying, like every any, any entertainment business, there's a whole shit ton of luck that goes along with it. Absolutely, and I mean, you could have the right raid, you know, and then people. Long time <laughs> listener, first time caller. My question <laughs> for Puppy Man is simple: Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Says Mr. Scoot. <laughs> Mr. Scoot. <laughs> <laughs> He absolutely killed it yesterday. Can I tell you what Scoot did on my charity stream yesterday? Like, we would, Lydia and I would pick a Disney song. He actually has that game. Like, he has a Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, DuckTales, all of those. So he was like, he was on cam, and while we're singing, <laughs> playing the goddamn game. <laughs> he's just, he's a genius. Absolute fucking it. genius. And maybe Scoot can give. I mean, it took Scoot about three years, he said, to get partnered, is what I understand. But he can correct me if I'm being an asshole and wrong. Um, networking is like a really big part of like when you're first starting out. Um, I, I have been reading about this quite a bit because I feel that frustration that Gloop is talking about. There's someone just playing Fortnite, not talking to chat, picking their nose, and they have 5,000 people watching them, but maybe they have a huge Twitter following. Maybe they have a YouTube yeah. following. Um, and and there, a lot has to do with, like, you know, they've brought the audiences with them. Hey, Lena Bean, we'll, we'll show your Could be, health. yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to do once a day on Twitter, like, what's the content, learning how to grow an audience there. There's, there's more discoverability on other platforms, hands down, no questions asked. So, but to be on a platform like YouTube is a different kind of effort. And it's not one to be entered into faintly and be like, okay, I'm just going to dump my streams there. Absolutely do not do that because the content is totally different. If you really, really like making evergreen content, if you like making how to's, if you like reacting, that that would be an okay place to get discovered if you're doing your search engine optimization correctly. Right. But as far as twitch goes and twitch things is actually a very good platform for getting discovered i mean the, the the community is really excited about finding new people wouldn't you say that gloop i mean you in particular yes yes yes, yes. i'm not there's no but to it yes uh the community is very excited about finding new people there is no but to it uh <laughs> No, and no, no one to sniff your butt. There's an and. There's an and. And there's a community about find. It is a community about loving to loving finding new people. Mm -hmm. And it's I think it's a community that has. But uh, they're okay. I, I, I tried to turn it into an and, but it's a but. Okay. It is a but. <laughs> Is but okay. Uh, it is a but. I tried to turn it into an ant, but I couldn't. Uh, but it's but. a community that has a stronger ramp up than other Twitch communities. Sure, absolutely. You can as you, people, and I mean ramp up in the fact that it's not just a camera and a headset mic. You're gonna be happy with that for a little bit, but you're not gonna be happy with that for long. 
then right. you're going to have to get the board and then you're going to have to get the bitch and mic and then you're going to have to get the camera and then the lights and then it, and then it becomes then you it's like what kind of show how do i want if you, you know if you want to go that avenue with it you know what i'm saying right. if right. you want to just stream it a lot of people be, it becomes a hobby that people can obsess about and it because it can be an expensive hobby i'm not saying it's sure. a required hobby i'm not saying it's required for success but i'm saying that it's you want to sound as good as you can you want to look as good as you can and you want to it so there's where it's not just turn on a game and have an overlay there's sure. more ramp up to our community possibly potentially than other communities yeah i would say like if i were to give it and you want to be unique yeah like correct. astronomer is saying yeah absolutely i mean and and knowing what your deal is and 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 being unique beyond like i mean everybody knows you for for the suit and certainly that would get people to click the tile right but you can't ha you can't click the tile to an empty duet and we know you as one of the most inter like interacting interacting with your duet partner interacting with chat hey loki doki welcome <laughs> but i think number one no matter what the heck you're streaming the interaction with the chat and getting to know people while you're starting out is king 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 you people want to want to make a connection with you and gloop i think again one of the best on the platform interacting with the duet partner and personalizing it you know what i mean and i've all i it's, yeah. yeah, in the same. Oh, thank you for saying that. Uh, I think that there's so many great entertainers in our community. But uh, with that being said, I it's the same thing with watching your your own streams. If you're right. bored doing it, if you're if you gotten to the point where it's become boring doing it, it, you know, just sitting in the chair became started to become boring for people. So people started standing up. Just 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 pushing the buttons to get into the song starts to become boring for people so you want other buttons to push so you get remotes to other shit that you can push sure and it's because you're you're gamifying the game for yourself uh and and then you get to the point where you're pushing a whole bunch of buttons and razzle dazzle and all this stuff but then you appreciate those times when you get to just sit back in a chair and then sing again that becomes unboring to you again it becomes entertaining for you again. And if it becomes entertaining for you again, it's going to be entertaining for everybody else. If you feel like you're just going through the motions, chances are you fucking are just going through the motions. So don't change your motions up. Yeah. Do something different because it's going to keep it engaging for you and therefore engaging for anybody, I think, who's going to watch you. But if you feel like – and then you're – You'll go back to riding the bicycle again, and it won't be just going through the motions. You know, having pen pals and having uh, the Church of Snacks Confession Booth Challenge is awesome because then when I actually just get to sit down and sing with people, I fucking love it. I love it so much. Yeah. I love it. I love it when you've done it four or five days in a row too, but it's just the fire burns in you so much more when you don't feel like you're just going through the motions, when you feel like you're really engaged and you're really having fun. It, I think it's, and anybody, we're all performers, and it's another thing that's so rare about our our community is we're most of us are all streamers, right? In a shooter in a shooter community, you've got a lot of people who play the game, but not a lot of people who stream it. Sure. They're watching the streamer stream it because this streamer is streaming it. We're all streamers in our community. Right. Most of us, we're cross promoting each other nonstop. We're if we're watching ourselves sit in a chair singing all day, then we're watching other people sitting in a chair singing all day. And at a certain point, certain point, it becomes a matter of how much more singing can I watch? Exactly. Then but then it's about interpersonal relations with the people in the community and stuff like that. And it becomes something bigger, something more, something deeper, hopefully. Or if not, it becomes disengaging for the fringe people. And it becomes disengaging sure. for the streamer. And you have to get back into the engagement mode. So for you with your improv, where, so this is what I think, again, when I'm talking about you, you know, improv, I, I bow down to the likes of you and, and Batsam and where, where did you learn that? Is that something that comes easy to you, which is probably a stupid question to ask, but, um, how does someone practice doing that better? Cause like, I mean, that could go miles in the, in the interaction on stream. 
you know, this idea that of thinking on the fly, firing from the hip. Oh man, is uh, that a can of worms? No, I, and I think it's just his. Uh, I think it's. I don't know. I don't know if they, if people ask me how to how to I how just, to practice improv. Go. <laughs> it's not that I think there's a how to practice improv is is the the practicing that you do is increasingly becoming comfortable with failure. Yeah. That's and the piece. So the show. many people, yeah, so many people get hung up on failing or what they think they were doing wrong. I do shit wrong all the time. I say shit that I don't mean. I make an ass out of myself. <laughs> I do something all the time, but I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. I'm comfortable making mistakes. Absolutely. I, I'll, it... I'll, I might not even get better right away. And I'm cool with that too. I'm cool with failing on camera and having it be out there and for everybody to see over and over again and to point fingers at me and tell me that I'm a failure. I'm cool with that. The worst thing anybody is going to tell you on this platform is that you're ugly and you shouldn't be streaming. That your show is bullshit and you shouldn't be streaming. That's the worst thing anybody is going to tell you on this platform in so many words. Yep. That you shouldn't be doing what you're doing and I'm disgusted looking at you. All right? That's the worst anybody can get. I, and you know what? And the decision. I'm cool with that. The, the decision <laughs> to continue and to roll out of bed in the morning, that's deeply personal. But I would say to anybody wanting to do this, don't do it for money. Absolutely do not do it for, for the money when you're starting off with, because it's, it's first of all, even the top streamers, the, it's, it's this. You know what I mean? It's not a stable income. But also, you will see that immediately. But your viewers will see that immediately. What you're in for. But if you're here to have fun, and 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 to put on a good show, whatever that show is, if you're doing a church of snacks, or if you're like, okay, I'm gonna do. <laughs> Marvel maybe like what money? <laughs> Correct. Correct. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, because this. I would say if you're gonna buy equipment for this platform, not everybody has to have a Shure SM7B. I started off on a fucking Yeti. I, Liddy started off on a Snowball. Rest in peace. Like that. That that's a meme, right? The Liddy Snowball seeds. Um, I started on an $18 gaming headset. Yeah, I as I, 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 you know, I lied. I started on a gaming headset too, and then I was like, oh, wait a minute, I have to mind distance. Like I was like literally pulling the mic away from my face, and I'm like, this isn't gonna work. But a, a USB mic is a really good way to start. If you're looking for something, you know, between fifty and a hundred dollars, you know. And Mr. Scoot said it right there. Turn your filters off. Barf everything out of your mind. That's it. One hundred percent willing to fail and not ashamed to do it. But people really, I find that that those those genuine moments are what people really really like to hear. Like that when Liddy and I were leaving that fucking chipmunk filter on. I think it was after a very serious duet with Revelos. And they were just sitting there like, what the fuck did we just do? Like, <laughs> and I'm notorious for that. Notorious for leaving filters on. So just, yeah, like use those little, like we're, we're not doctors. We're not surgeons. We're, we're, there is not a huge amount of precision required. Like nobody's going to die if we fuck up. You know what I mean? It, it, it becomes part of the show. I fuck publish up. my fuck ups. Yeah. Because people like to see that you're human too. Nobody <laughs> is going to be ashamed of any duet that you publish with them other than you. Now, people might watch, like, I watched Laser Cat sing some Melissa Etheridge, or no, some uh, Jewel with me last night, and I'm like, yeah. this seed is a train wreck. I'm nowhere near <laughs> the harmonies that I thought I was. This is a propa fueled seed and i'm Absolutely. leaving it there i'm leaving it but Zamud, i'm leaving it there zamudi that is like the whole point of zamudi's you know no shame saturday he will just he, you get on there and you, and your your audience requests what you're doing and he, he invited me on he's like is this okay and i'm like is my name princess pashley i am all about it <laughs> but like doing things like that could help your improv guys like if if, if you know um Picking a song that you have no fucking clue what's going on or, or what the melody is, and you just you just roll with it. 
Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. It's like you can't. You can't have it's maybe that maybe this might be an aha moment for me because I just okay. really you can't improv is not like it's not it's not like I can do improv and therefore I it will help me improve my confidence yeah in absolutely. myself kind of thing it's the other way around mm -hmm. it's the other way around and I think that's cart before the horse mentality you have to have the improvement in confidence first and then you tackle the improv. Okay? Yeah. If you're going to think learning tricks of the trade of improv are going to give you the kind of confidence you want But the first thing that has to do is all your inhibitions have to go right out the window. Right? Absolutely. That has to happen before you even can take the toolbox and open it up. Once your inhibitions go out the window, then you can open the tools and play with it. But until if you're going to go into it thinking, unless my seeds are perfect, I'm not going to publish them. Or unless my seeds are this, I'm not going to publish them. Or unless this song was Absolutely. perfect, I'm not going to publish it. Or I'm not going to go live because my voice isn't perfect today. It's not right. about singing perfect. It's not about performing impeccably each time. It's about an engagement with your community. It's about. But if you're feeling in a good mood, you should turn it on and just be in just chatting and just sing a little bit and just chatting or whatever, or whatever. It's not. So the confidence comes first. And sure. all the tools that you can use with that confidence come second, I think. So looking at yourself in the mirror and knowing, hey, today I'm going to have some fun and I'm not going to worry about failing is then you can do whatever the hell you want to after that. I think I, 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 to kind of dovetail off this, I, I had a weird question for you. Do you leave viewer count on in your broadcasting software? Is that something you look at during the stream or do you check it out after the stream? Uh, it's there, but I don't sure. obsess about it. Okay. It's there, but I don't obsess about it. I tell myself, I've told myself all the time, man, I'll see. Right now, you know, what do we got? There's, I don't know, some 50 some odd viewers in here. That's so much more than should be in here. I don't know that I feel like I deserve to have in here. I feel lucky that there are so many people in here. I would be stoked if it was just five people, like it used to be maybe back in the day, just me and me and Cleo and mm -hmm. and Curly Doobie just, or whatever. The all my pro, you know, I'm just, just looking at all the people with first badges next to their names. Yeah, just goofing off. I mean, it, that was fine then too. Uh, so if it ever dwindles to that point again, I'm cool with it. You know, sure. maybe I did something wrong or maybe I, people got old. I got tired and old or whatever. But as long as I'm still having fun, I'm cool with it. This has always never been about the viewer count. It's never been about getting partner. It still isn't. Um, it's been it's a great honor. It's awesome. I love it. It's wonderful. I feel so honored that I have it. But it's the, the piece. Somebody Sugarroth asked me the other day, what's your biggest concern about partner now that you have it? And I was like maintaining the level of interaction in the community that i had before that's sure. the biggest thing i'm worried about or more now maybe that i feel the pressure that i should do it more now mm -hmm. as a representative of the community that's the biggest thing is like i don't feel like the check mark is that important to me because i wasn't in it for that game i was in it to have some fun and i still am and sure i don't i don't know i mean on this discussion of partner um um this is zick has asked what what do you think is your biggest accomplishment until now and what is your biggest goal still to be checked off? Let me just check this out. <laughs> Thank you so much for the follow. Emre Taskirin, 1903. I appreciate it. And Thamnia's 17. If I butchered your name, I apologize. Um, what, what are... I mean, it doesn't even have to be on stream. It could be outside of this. Um, what, what, what things are you super proud of, you know, just in your life in general? Or on Twitch things. Oh, I, I mean, the, I say, I, I say I didn't do it for the partner, but the partner check mark, I'm super proud of, you know? Absolutely. No, please celebrate. Uh, Everybody cheers. Raise propofils to gloop dog. Raise your, raise your bubblies or your seltzer water, whatever it is. I mean, I, I, it's not why I did it, but I'm super proud of it because it's a, because of what it means for, for our community. I'm super proud of it. It's it's like a culmination of, of so many different countless years and so many different disciplines that sure. 
has brought me here not only singing but improvisational comedy and the uh, lighting. lighting and camera work um being genuinely genuinely interested in other people um it's just it's there's so many things that are that are at the essence and root of my core that uh are, are on display whenever i stream that mm -hmm. so for to be part of a community this big and this dynamic and this talented and to be hoisted on every on on shoulders and lifted up to that achievement is who i i it's a, it's a monumental achievement working on major motion pictures is a great achievement making sure. re reaching the reaching the 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 status of best boy grip on a you know 250 million dollar movie was pretty cool uh um I don't know. So there's there's lots of, there's lots of, buying this house was a pretty cool achievement. <laughs> I don't know. It is um, a, it is a huge achievement, especially in your part of the world. <laughs> you know, it's it's no easy thing to buy best boy check. What? No, nasty <laughs> best is boy grip. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I feel very lucky. I'm very fortunate. I have I, I've had very many good things uh, happen. On the flip side of that, you psychic like people have good things happen, people do have bad things happen, but you have to I, I've been lucky enough to be able to take the good things that happen to me and dive into them one hundred and ten percent and give them one hundred and ten percent of my time and effort and focus. And so mm -hmm. I, I'm lucky in that aspect too. Have you ever tried out Smule? Mm -mm, not at okay. all, but after watching Justice Pirates uh uh, audition. She had two Smule auditions that for oh, her wow, audition really? for no small part. Yeah, she had recorded oh. a few Smule, Smule auditions, and it was really dynamic what she had done. I didn't know if that was so much the platform as it was her usage of the platform that was so yeah. well done. But I was like, oh, it's a karaoke platform that you can do on your phone, pretty much is what I gather. Exactly. From it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Cool. I don't need it though. I don't need it though. But yeah, no, there's not, a lot I'm, of I'm, As I'm sitting here staring at what I've done in the last like year in my my battle station right now, I'm just like going to my phone right now. Seems like such a downgrade. <laughs> and, uh, well, I think I think it's just two different like purposes. Like because Smule is a different kind of expense. You know, what I mean, you're not paying for all this. You don't have a PC, microphones, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you do have to pay a monthly subscription. So there's kind of like, I feel like there's more, Joliet has said this, that there's more of an intensity to make a perfect product. Whereas Twitch things, you're not really paying for it. You know what I mean? You, you, you can just hop on. Guys, you can just download this. If you're not already playing Twitch things, you can just download it and use your headset mic and just get and get your feet wet. Um, so there's kind of more of a chill atmosphere in, in, this, in this community. So... Yeah, so people have this intensity, so it's like the cream rises to the top on Smule, I imagine. Correct. Is what you're saying, like it was production value, whatever, but that, that kind of be, I think, you know, I don't like, I, and that's the cool <laughs> part about, uh, I, I, I think that's the cool part about our game is that it's not about super great singers. It can be, but it doesn't have to be, sure. you know? It's about people just having some fun, doing some karaoke, and I, you know, I'm sure a vast amount of Smule is like that. I know Miklos played a lot of Miklos Archbanic official yeah. played a lot of Smule. Yeah. Uh, but it, you know, so yeah, where I think Smule is about performance aspect and stuff like that. You don't, uh, you don't have the words on the screen. You don't have a bunch of avatar shit bouncing around. It's just you and your voice. You know, you don't have. There's no gamification of it. It's just you and singing, and mm. whatever version of the song you decided to use as your backing track Absolutely. or wait i or i don't even know does smule have backing tracks i think they do i i've never dabbled in it i've seen like that commercial come through like on a youtube video yeah i you don't know, know. I, I don't know if it's got the backing tracks provided and that's what the service fee is or if people are pl paying for exposures so they can show off their skills i'm not sure about it they have backing tracks as Zafri. Okay, okay so that's what it is Gotcha. Read you loud and clear. Um, this is kind of a tough question to, for me to ask you, but it was uh, brought by Milton Nascimento. Milton. Is, is is there a clickiness on Twitch things? And I don't really know how to answer that question. Um, yes. Yes. There are several. There are many. They're uncountable. 
a number of clickinesses and switch things. I think there's clickiness in any social aspect. And sure. the minute you gather people together, the minute you gather more than four people together, they're going to start branching off into minor variations of factions. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. In, in any sort of sociological aspect, you're going to find people who you mesh with uh, sociologically on deeper levels than you do others. And then you're going to find yourself gravitating to those people more than you do others. Is there, is, is, is it clicky? Uh, clicky is maybe has a bad connotation. Do people just yeah. branch off and form groups of friends that they do, that they spend more time with than they do others, that they sing with more than others? Sure. I think you find that in any game, and especially any game that is a multiplayer game. If, you, if we were playing CSGO, you're going to find people that you invite into your into your CS:GO clan more than you do that you gain, that you shoot people with more than you do. In Dota, I found people that I invited more to my groups than I did others. Same thing. Exact same thing. Is it exclusively clicky? No. That's the question I think some people are asking. Is there an exclusivity to the groups that are formed? No. No. Are the, is there an exclusivity to the community as a whole? Absolutely not. Are there groups of people that prefer to sing with each other more so than there are, than others? Yes. Yeah. There's only there's only so much time in the day that you can spend with different people. So, am I going to spend more time spend uh, with people who I have more like mindedness than I do? Yes. Does that mean I'm not going to go into streams of people who I'm not as like minded with? Not at all. Mm -hmm. Am I going to spend more time with the people I am like-minded with? Probably. I think that's just sociologically natural. I don't yeah. think it's any. I don't think there's an inference that makes our our community any different than others. In fact, I think our community is more inclusive than other communities. And I would also encourage anyone who just just to, to pour your love in, into any of these. Like if you see that groups have formed and. You know, just go walk up, like go into a stream and say, hey, I, you know, I, it's just a good night, stick off, have a great evening, um, good sleep. Uh, because you can't assume you understand what people are thinking about you until you get there. And, you know, maybe, maybe there are things said about you before you even arrive. But you, if you show up and you show your love, um, I mean, it's hard to argue with that. Um, and so I, would, I, did, I wouldn't say like go and, and be like you're so fucking amazing to the next stream you're so fucking amazing but interact and say like god I love this song this song takes me back to prom or whatever something you know I would say genuine interaction um, and, and see what you like and don't feel bad if like if it's not your vibe it's not your vibe you know then that's all about having the confidence in yourself and I, I struggle with this I'm like why the huh I don't, I don't know what it's, I did wrong. And, and, and sometimes it's out of your control, you know? Yeah. I want to spend time. Yeah. Every, I want to spend time in as many channels as I can. And, and not just drifting through saying, Hey, how you doing? Great song. Thanks for singing with me. Bounce out. I want to watch them for a while. I want to watch everybody for a while. I want to right. watch how they interact. I want to get to know them. So that way, when they come to my channel, I can talk about something specific that they did in their stream. I want to know how they work, how they operate. And there's just not enough time in the day to do that, to spend time with them in their stream, to sure. watch the, all the duets that people sing with you, you know, that everybody sings with you consistently all the time, to do your own duets, to keep doing your own streaming, to keep doing your own streaming through the course of the day and to have all that. There's not enough time physically in the day to, to, to do all of those things. So you just have to do as much of them as you can. Um, so... Uh, with that being said, is does it get clicky? Potentially. Uh, exclusively clicky? Not at all. I don't think so. I have not experienced that, and I have not seen it happen where it's like, you can't come here. You can't be in this subgroup of our group. We don't accept you here. I haven't seen that. Um, the Road to El Dorino had a couple of questions. Um... Give it that bad. I mean, mark that as complete. Let's see. The first one, one is. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, you no, no. You go ahead. Go. You, no, you go ahead. Let's see. When do you think the Twitch Things MMO is going to be released, Captain? 
Say again, sweet girl. He said, when do you think that the Twitch sings MMO, massively multiplayer online? <laughs> I think it's in development right now. In development. Have you, do you play MMOs or do you have, did you dabble in WoW at all or EverQuest? I did. I played from vanilla all the way through Mists of Pandaria mm -hmm. um, very religiously. I was in a, I was in an in-game guild at the time for the Suramar server which slowly diminished uh, uh, probably from Lich King on. But yeah, sure. fr from from vanilla on, I was doing in-game content, raiding 40 mans and stuff like that as a class leader and, and such. Sure. I was very very heavily into... No, I was a dwarf priest. I was alliances to the core. Oh, for, for uh, the, uh, the, 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 the fear ward, right? Yeah, fear ward. Yeah, yeah. Nixia, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, had to have it. Had Fucking to have nerd. it. Fucking nerds. <clears throat> what was your Alliance nerds. What what um what was your favorite? I raid? had horde characters too. I had horde, horde characters too, but I yeah, I Alliance was my, was my main. <laughs> uh, what, what was your favorite raid? I would say hands down my favorite one was Karazan. Karazan was cool. It was cool. Kara Kara was cool for sure. That had the it had all the cool like the the, the theatrical ones, the the variable theatrics. Yep. Uh, the opera was really the fun. The opera called. endings, yeah. You could get Big Bad Wolf, or you could get little, you know, Little Red Riding Hood, or you could get Wizard of Oz, or whatever it was. That was really cool. Uh, uh, I, uh, I was a big fan of uh, of uh, Sun Temple. Okay, I don't think I got to that. That was the end of BC, wasn't it? Yeah, Burning Crusade. Yeah, I, so. that, usually my ex husband and I, uh, we we met on one way, little there. girl. That's right, Philly yep. cheesesteak. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, we we usually took we would play very hardcore for about six months, and then the last three months we'd be like, okay, fuck this, and then the new X pack would come out, and then we'd be sucked back in, like everybody else. So I think that was one. Like I usually miss, like I missed Black Temple. I missed um Yeah, BT, I was gonna say BT is right up there too. The yeah. the the Illidan fight at the end is really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, of Black Temple to get the blades and stuff like that. And this is that was back when it was still it was still it was still cool, you know. It wasn't so cookie cutter. Everybody had their everybody had different gear and people were battling for different gear and stuff like that. It wasn't so much like this gear is only for this class and that gear is only for that class. You'd have like people right. class battles over gear and stuff be like, I want that. I need that necklace. And you'd be like, What do you need that necklace for? You should go to this tank. And I'd go, Want yeah. it, I'm rolling on it. You know, it's whatever. People had more individuality and how they could build do their builds and spec themselves and stuff like that right. so it's like not everybody walked through with the exact same gear on everyone knows that all gear is hunter gear that's right uh, i mean a hunter okay i know i know <laughs> uh, i played i played a blood elf oh paladin God, and a so night funny. elf and a night elf hunter but um yeah it's true. It's true. So yeah, I play the shit out of it. I had over a year's total gameplay in just my main dwarf priest alone. My thing was I was a I was a I was a PvPer. <clears throat> I was a oh, PvPer. Okay. I was a PvPer before uh, arenas. I was a PvPer when it was all about field marshal gear, and I achieved oh, the rank God. of field mar. I achieved the rank of field marshal on my wow. server. Wow. We need a cheer yeah. for that, guys. Holy uh, shit. I would do, uh, I would do 70 to 90 hour, uh, 90 hours a week myself on oh. stimulants through the mind, through the roof, oh uh, grinding a Rathi Basin with other five noters. And we would just <laughs> five note a Rathi Basin in five minutes. 24 hours you, you know 36 hours a day just go in and five oh noted non-stop with auto cures auto queuing software but how and stuff long like would that. that queue for you like i i have heard horror stories about eight hour six hour queues with a well we would keep our parties to eight and we would just uh, let two people we would keep we would let two people trickle in just so we wouldn't have to go against 10 v 10s oh no you know what i'm confused i'm thinking of alterac valley alterac valley had like the the eight hour queues because that well you could so you people. could get into eight hour queues 
use an AV as well, but we had auto cures. But at Rathi Basin, we would five note a Rathi Basin nonstop, and it was insanely fun. I would, I had, I would run the queuing parties because I was the one trying to get field marshal, and there mm -hmm. would be li lines of people, forty to sixty strong, waiting to get in and party wow. with me. But if you weren't the right class makeup for five noting, if you, we already had a hunter to defend. To defend, if we already had a hunter to defend stables, then we didn't need you. We already had a hunter to <laughs> defend stables. We're sorry, we didn't need it. So you know, so it was this like it was back. like there would be people like in line waiting to get in just because they know the mm, uh, you know the the points, the arena points were going to go through the roof, and we would get it done so fast. We would five node immediately as fast as you could, five minutes and six seconds, as fast as you could humanly. And five then it really node. ramps up. And then you're just building, you're getting arena points so fast that it's like, it's, it just really ramps up. And you have to, you have to, because you're competing against everybody else on the server for one field marshal set right. for a week. You yep. get it for a week and then it, it recalibrates every week. You might yep. get it again if you keep, if you keep going hard for that whole week. But yeah, I had it. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Ba -ba. That Road Del Dorino has also asked, what do you both encounter? What do you do? Whoa, is this Grade A under A? The, the YouTuber Grade A under A? Hey, mate, oh. how you doing? Grade A under A, I'm a huge fan. What is oh, up? Oh, hell yeah. What's up? Hello, mate. Oh, my God, I'm a huge fan. Welcome to the stream, Grade A under A. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the stream. I, I like missed you while you were on your hiatus. I missed you. I missed you while you were on your hiatus and you've come back. <laughs> I got your videos when you finally came back after a while. Welcome to the stream, buddy, and thank you for the follow. Oh man, I love your videos. You're you're an excellent, excellent YouTuber. I'm a total subscriber, big huge fan. I'm glad you came in here. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining. What thank you for joining, buddy. That's awesome. I, I'm sorry, Pashley. I cut you off. I'm no, like that's somebody exciting. I totally love. Great A under A's YouTube videos. A big, huge man. But now you've fan. given me Thank someone so else to check out. Oh, no, no, no. Holy oh, man. Cow. Thanks for coming in here. Thanks for coming in here. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. We're just talking about, we're talking about some streaming stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks but... for coming in and saying hi. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, I love this platform. I I'm a big platform. fan. And he took about a year, a year and a half off or so, I'm going to say, where he wasn't making some videos. I've seen him trickling okay. back in pretty recently. And I was okay. a big, huge fan. Big, huge fan. Gotcha. Oh, go ahead, Pashi. What were oh. we talking about, sweet girl? Well, no, this, someone had asked, like, what do you do if you have a, if you, if you're looking at a duet and all of a sudden that person is just shitting all over your performance and not being very fair. Maybe they were looking for, maybe you were being silly and imperfect and someone was like, excuse me, what the, the shit is this? You know what I mean? Do you, do you just immediately stop watching that or, or what do you do? I don't know. I'm kind of a train wreck watcher. I'm kind of a glutton for punishment. <laughs> you know, I kind of want to see how the how, wait. Where's this gonna go? You know, let's see. Let's see where. Let's see how this plays out. <laughs> let's see how this plays. See how far this goes. See how angry they get at me. So you find it you entertaining. Know? Yeah, and I like people who come in and give me shit. They're like, what, "What's up with the dog costume? You're an adult," and uh, and I'm Aww. like, "I love that kind of stuff." No, I love that kind of stuff. I'm cool with that kind of stuff. You know, I, uh, it, if I'll try to turn people, but I'm, uh. makes me more epic. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with the dog costume? Papa Zillion coming in with the raid. Hey, Papa oh. Zillion, how you doing? The beautiful and incomparable Papa Zillion. How you doing, buddy? Thank you for this raid. I gotta write Papa down to sing with him today. We're having okay. we're yeah. we're sitting here chatting with Princess Pashley on the good talk. <laughs> and thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your stream and, and hanging out with me. Like I really, really appreciate that. <laughs> oh, Pashley, like I said, you and today. I you and I we're yeah, we're 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 forever. We're forever. We're all good. Forever we are all friends. good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the stream setup compliments. <laughs> uh, I, I'll read another question to you, um, Milton. Again, wh what are the benefits of Twitch Sings being as small as we are versus big like Valorant or Minecraft? Something just cool really happened. Thank you so much for the biddies, Mickey Moods. 
Nikki, such a sweetheart. Thank you. So yeah, so I, I think that the answer to that question is pretty obvious. Like it's built in networking because you're meeting people and you're singing with them. Um, and, and the other, the other- Inherently, we're inherently cross-promotional. Correct. So we're inherently supporting other streamers and wanting to take other streamers, take our viewers into other streamers' games where in Valorant, they might not want to raid somebody else. We're inherently cross-promotional in the fact that, yeah, you can play this game and you can sit in your channel and you can sing solos all day, but you're going to have a limited social exposure in the concept of what this game can do for you socially. Uh, sure. and, and sharing a love of music you can it, you can internalize the love of music for sure. It can be something Absolutely. very, very personal and very touching. But I don't. I think music is inherently something that sociologically drives civilization. You find it in the most third world uh, uh, tribes in the middle of the Amazon for, for you know, and throughout the course of history, I think music is inherently sociological it's a social construct it's, sure. a, it's how stories are shared through generations and stuff like that before any sort of organization was ever put to it so for music to be an individual expression is one thing but no musician is using that form of expression so they can sit at a room always and play it by themselves every musician hopes to be able to share that music with another human being. I think in the root of who they are, they want to be able to share that music. That's why you sit in a room by yourself and learn how to play guitar. So sure. one day you can share it with somebody else. That's why you sing a song in the shower. Cause one day you want to be able to share that music that you love with somebody else. Maybe not just singing it, but maybe just listening to it as a consumer or whatever. I think we embrace music as a sociological tool and it should while we can enjoy it on an individual basis it's meant to be shared absolutely there's also there's there's the, there's a rule about twitch streaming which i i've heard different arguments about this but when you first start out streaming you really don't want to be streaming into league of legends or um are these bigger oh ah, i have a lukey i have a lukey hi Luke's gonna come join us for a second. Hi, the clickbait. Baby. It's the clickbait. The clickbait. Grade A under A. <laughs> Luke, do you want to say hi to Gloop Dog real fast? Hi. It's like it's like it's like if I drew myself with a giant huge upper lip and a little tiny lower lip. It's that sweet that sexy face? clickbait. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you just spin it, just spin it towards us, and then pick it out of the. Like, hi. Er, er, say hi to Luke, guys. Oh, Luke is here. What's up, Lukey Speaking Luke? Of the, you just roll with the show, right? Luke, if you had a question for Gloop Dog, what would you ask him? Oh, no. Why? Put the poor kid on why? the spot. <laughs> why is a good question. That is, that is a good question. Why is a good question. That is the okay. question we're all trying to Luke, answer, Luke. Why? How about I ask you a question? What is come, come over here into the light. Come to the light, child. Why? The best question ever. What is your favorite video game to play on Switch? I Mine? have no idea. Luke's. What, what is your... F uh, yeah, for Luke's. Luke's, what's your favorite video game? Uh, he's gone. <laughs> and he's gone. <laughs> and he's, he's gone. 10, right? He's, he's 10 11. years old. <laughs> he knows. He's still 10, right? Still, <laughs> still 10, right? He's he's 11. Oh, he's 11 now. That's he's right. 11. We've had a Luke birthday recently. I'm old enough to right. have an 11-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing like what like i i deal with that all the time and sometimes like i'll he'll come in and scare the shit out of me and then sometimes i'll send him in to scare uh liddy um <laughs> but i i i it's just when that happens i just roll with it i make him part of the show and i'm like hey and then oftentimes he's like okay i'll wait till you're done and then he walks <laughs> it's not it's it's different with an 11 year old who can like you know can take care of themselves. I also yeah. have B Liddy here who can attend to like, oh, I'm hungry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, <laughs> but sometimes he jumps right in and he's, and he will crack a joke and he's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. You see, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. That's for sure. It, it falls, it doesn't fall too far, but it's also enhanced. His dad is, is super duper smart. He's a radiologist. And, and so that it just like with my performance, you know, genes and me, he's, you know, I think it's uh, it's compounded. Triple in him. threat. He's a triple threat. <laughs> but I appreciate you thinking I'm funny. <laughs> you know you are princess. 
sometimes it's just a matter of no filter. It's like taking the filter off and vomiting. It's exactly what Mr. Scoot says. Yeah, yeah, talking about taking off the filter and vomiting. And some people can put, you know, put a camera onto that and turn that, edit it and turn it into a really nice YouTube career as well. You know, so it's, yeah, it's, I, yeah, I think the crucial part about it is, and I think, I think this is something having an opinion mm -hmm. and expressing your opinion, having a viewpoint on certain topics and expressing it. But not being so uh, concrete about it that you can't allow for a malleability to your uh, to your approach as well. You can't. I think the minute you think you have everything figured out, it's you're done. I think this the minute you stop self evaluating, and this is kind of to the point before, like you know, someone's you got to have someone alongside you who's gonna be like, well, what the fuck are you doing? Maybe not so harshly, but like. Because there's always hopefully a lot change. of people that you can trust to be like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> grope dog. The more people he, you can earn to to give, he, like I said before, those are true friends. Timberlaking, that's exactly what she's talking about. Giving him the old really, really, really? is that what you decided? Really? <laughs> really? Do you think that was a good idea? Did you? And that's what, and that's fine. You know, the more people, that's a true friend. That's a true friend who can look at you and be like, I'm doing this for your own good. Stop doing this or do more of that or less of this or less of that. Not just in streaming, but in life. That's a true friend. Yes. Uh, and if you've earned yourself the right, you know, enough respect out of enough people to be able to know that they can come to you with that kind of news. And that you're not going to be a butthurt about it. And two, you're going to find you're going to respect them more as a friend because of it and invite that kind of a behavior. It yeah. hurts. Sometimes it hurts to hear it, but it's the right thing to hear sometimes. That's uh, that's the kind of friendships you want. I think I hope. By the way, Gloop, I have to point out someone who just showed up in chat. Tiger! Speaking of Tiger! <laughs> A true friend serenades you with a guitar on your birthday. Hi, Yuzi. How are you doing? Tiger and, and, and friends, welcome into the stream. We are podcasting with Gloop Dog. He it was so generous of, of his streaming time and his time in general. We got Cricky in here. Cricky hijacked the screen, stream, stream, stream today. Cricky! Cricky! <laughs> Tiger is usually a regular on the show, but he is he has had surgery. He had his retina detachment his eye. It's incredibly uncomfortable and painful, and he is recovering. And we are just, you know, we are all hijacking for him and supporting his stream. <laughs> but I, I found, um, th speaking of someone else in chat, um, so Pixel Pete, if you guys ever want to check out Poppin' Buckets' uh, long-lost cousin, go no further Pixel than Pixel Pete. Pete. P -E -E -T. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's a Witcher 3 streamer. I've been trying to go into video game streamers and check all that out. And I, I was like, I saw his his um, his cam was chroma keyed, basically, and it looked just like popping. <laughs> I was like, I got to get in there. <laughs> um, but Cricky, I hope everything went well. And I, I would love to sing with Ty and Cricky, but I, I am I'm taking the vow of no music today along with um you know, in, in honor of the blackout movement. That's just kind of what I'm doing. That's my decision. I don't hold anybody else to that, but <laughs> maybe you can tell me who I remind you of and I will shout them out right now. Is there some movement going on today? What's happening today? So I had to Google it or it was brought to my attention. Um, it's called blackout Tuesday, um, collective action, collective action originally starting by elements of the music industry to protest racism and br police brutality. Um, and it was basically like no music today. If you go over to the Twitch Sings music or not Twitch music, um, they have a, a, a dark screen, a black screen with some text on it. And it says, you know, we're in honor of this. We are not, you know, singing any music today. And um, that is obviously not to discourage anybody else. If that is what f feels right to you today, please go ahead and do it. Yeah, um, absolutely. If that's your way of, if that's how people would like to show to show support, that's a wonderful way to show so, so movement of support. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think. On the flip side of that, I think music is one of the most healing things that humanity can bring. Absolutely. And I will continue to embrace in the music Please. in honor of uh, the people who were of the black community and the people who were thinking about who are in so much pain right now. Uh, I will, I, you know, I, we can all show our support in countless different ways. Sure. I think that's wonderful. 
Um, but I was also encouraging uh, if if you want if if people feel helpless and they feel like they can't help out and um and and help these supporters um these these people who are who are fighting and rioting and um there are many 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 charities you can reach out to. But also, I, I have been promoting the GoFundMe for George Floyd um, on my stream today because um, I would like to see support for his family. But there's so many others. Um, but that that was basically um, that that was what was going on today. There it is. There it is, guys. Well, Gloop, thank you so much, Diozian, for that follow. Thanks so much, Diozian. Well, Gloop, um, I think this was a killer, killer show today. I don't want to take up any more of your time. You're so generous. Thanks for having me on here. Good talk, princess. Good talk. <laughs> Everybody, if you're not following Gloop Dog, please, please. I, I don't know what you're doing, um, but you, you will certainly be better for, for having seen any of his streams, whether he's gaming, whether he's last minute subbing on on a podcast like this <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely slay. i had like 10 questions written down and then i was like well <laughs> the flow was so good and, and you were just just such a wealth of knowledge um lighting singing performing and um and thank you so much thank you thank thanks you, for thank having you. me on i'll come back and talk to you any day princess paisley I love thank you very much i love your face i'll talk to you soon <laughs> bye Right, guys uh, yeah that was so we we went diff we went a the completely different format today because um my my co-conspirator felt very strongly about um appearing on any stream today and that is her right and um and i commend her for it um i felt i wanted to get it because it was kind of at such a late hour and i i didn't want to not show up for people um uh gloop was so generous and, and stepped in uh last minute Darkland Ambrosias, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Um, and guys, you know, just I think if 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 our our black brothers and sisters want anything, they want us to listen. They want us to help. Um, they don't want us to go on a soapbox about our experiences and like, oh well, this is what happens when I'm pulled over by the police. They want to be heard. Um, the riots are the smoke of the fire, and I would I would caution against saying. I posted this on Twitter. There is like the death of, of George Floyd was terrible, but the rioting and looting has to stop. And I think the thought process needs to reverse and it needs to be the riot the rioting and looting is terrible, but the death of black men and, and, and black people at the hands of police needs to stop. It needs to stop. If you watch the video, it's it's not just an accident. It there was something there, 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 there's something going on and people, we, we need, maybe we don't have money to give, but we have ears and we can listen and, and we have our platforms. And if, if, if that opinion, if my opinion is offensive to you, thank you so much for the host, dysfunctional vet. If that is offensive to you, I think I would also encourage you to look within and, and why is that offensive to you that we would want to help our fellow human being? Um, and so normally, like I said, I would do a feedback. Um, I would, would have run a raffle with a feedback and, and we would have listened to some music. But like I said, like I just didn't want to um, participate. Geeky girl, thank you so much, sweetie. We got some gift subs to Lark Dark Lord GT, Corgashin, a Ninja Beast, Johnny Barcelona, and the Awkward Brittany. Guys, welcome to the Princess Pashley Castle. Um, it's just, it's too important. And it's not even so much like, there was a very famous quote that came out of the Holocaust. First they came for the Catholics, then they came for the gays, and they came for the Jews, and they came for, and they came for, and so on and so forth. And then when it was my turn, there was nobody left. Um, it's something. Thank you, guys. Guys, amazing. Geeky girl, thank you so much. Um, Twitch sings is. I've gotten to know so many people, and I've had my heart and 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 mind changed profoundly. You're happy to be here. Well, thank you for stopping by. And that that was super generous of you, geeky girl. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um. There have been ups and downs over the past nine months, but I can say without a doubt that this was, you know, picking up this game and 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 the decision stream was one of the best decisions I've ever made, and I am I'm so happy to have met all of you. Um, 
I just like I, I this is usually a three hour I want it if you're new here this is usually a podcast where I have two other people um talking with me um but uh you know w- one of my co-conspirators um Tiger just raided um he is recover. he has a he had a medical emergency a couple weeks ago and he's still re- um we want to give him love and support so he can be back back kicking ass like he usually does Jono how's it going um and then we also um we had Mellow Mermaid, and she had she had a personal decision to make today, and, that, and and I support her in that, and I love her, and I know she wishes nothing but love and light in the world. Um, so Gloop Dog, um, incredible stepping up, guys! Please go follow him, please, please. I can't I can't say it enough, and I am so thankful to his generosity. Um, so I think we're gonna be we're gonna wrap it up. We're gonna bring send that party over to Gloop Dog. Um, in a couple minutes here but just i just wanted to leave you off thank him for what he stepped in very last minute i wandered into stream and i usually don't like to share um my my troubles you know especially on his stream and or anybody's stream like if i'm having stream issues and i said you know i'm having some logistical issues um and he he said oh what's your problem i said well i i my my you know th- my my friend and, and co-collaborator you know had a had a had personal feelings about streaming today and she backed out and he said oh yeah well i'll be free like dude let's go and so yeah we we made an agreement um you know like he was gonna he wasn't gonna turn off stream like usually i have the t- two other people on stream with me their cameras but like you know considering what he was offering you know i couldn't get his camera on but usually that's the, the and we usually talk about vocal technique topics stream topics too no problem, Loki. Thank you so much for sitting down yesterday and, and having a chat with me. Like that was all so super helpful. Um, but anyway, let's get this raid started. I'm not sure what I'm gonna play tomorrow. I think I would like to put cosplay on and play some Witcher Three, but um, but yeah, let's just bring that party over. Just um, hey, Chax, how's it going, sweetie? Thank you, thank you for being there for me at four in the morning when I woke up randomly and I was like, yeah, I'm a fast typer. Did you hear that mechanical keyboard going? This was so encouraging and guys, guys, thank you so much for being here. Again, thank you so much for being here. I like this interactive podcast format. I like talking to you guys. No, it was my pleasure. You're, you are just, you're beautiful. Your voice is beautiful. Your spirit is beautiful. But J Mart, yeah, guys, guys, <laughs> thank you, Reckon. <laughs> um, I just, if you can spam with Gloop Dog emotes, with, with Pashley emotes, whatever, whatever suits your fancy, I, I, I absolutely, I love, I love showing that love. Foggy arrived late. Usually, like I said, usually we go another hour. Um, but because I, I didn't want to impose on any more of Gloop's time, uh, because he was live streaming. Thank you, Jorox. Yeah, I wanted to, like, I, you know, I talked to Loki Doki about YouTube content, and I, I'm thinking about, like, I want to start doing that stuff, and um, this is good, this is good fodder to put onto YouTube, and so that's why, um, that's why this podcast exists. But it's also, like, I, you know, I was, go- Mello and I, like, it was something I was thinking about, then Mello was thinking about it, and then Ty came along, uh, yeah. 